Okay, let's go. This is a take. All right, settle. Here we go. Camera. Getting ready. Roll sound. Spin. Spin. Free bacon. Take one. Big. And action. I started out on this project writing it. I wrote the script, and I was like, all right, I'll shoot it, you know, maybe I'll get it in a film two class, and I'll do it then. Class rejected the script. They didn't want to do it. They didn't want to do it as film two. Teacher was nervous that I couldn't produce it in one semester and couldn't work on it. So I decided to do the project independently. Yeah, that's good, that's good. You know, I'm gonna, he kind of is, he, yeah, camera left, exactly. I um, put together a crew of Emerson College students, and I also got uh, industry professionals from Boston to work on the film. Technically, you know, responsible for the image quality, um, you know, what film stocks we're using, what lighting setup we'll be, we'll be implementing. Uh, I've spent a couple months planning the, the shots, figuring out what I'd like to do with the camera, the movements, those sorts of things, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm definitely still learning um, a lot. Um, a gaffer is the head electrician. What that means is he's in charge of all the lighting tools that are used on a film. I pick out what I think are the best lighting sources that will fulfill what the DP is looking for. I am the assistant director, and uh, my responsibilities are to get the um, main talent on set, work with the script supervisor and the director of photography. A good AD and, and a good script supervisor can get the director in a bubble, so he shouldn't have to deal with anything else except um, getting his shots. Simple way to put it, uh, executive producer is in charge of uh, the crew and the talent's comfort. Um, I've got to do a whole different assortment of things, right up to finance. Um, it entails a lot of different things, so I find myself getting involved in the, in the film in a lots of different ways, with the exception of um, some of the creativity. I leave that entirely up to uh, our director and his um, crew. I'm the production sound mixer for this shoot. I mix sound, and I work with a boom operator. I have an assistant, and together, it's our goal to produce the highest quality uh, sound mix that we can. The script supervisor mainly makes sure that the director gets all of his coverage, makes sure that once they get into the editing room, they have things to work with to make a complete movie. Uh, I also make sure to say why camera cuts early or why did sound say it's a bad take. The one thing I have to make sure, besides the amount of coverage, is to see which shots are Andrew's favorite or the director's favorite. I'm the key makeup artist on this film and um, my part of my responsibility is making the actors look good, keep them unshiny <laughs> throughout the film. Makeup is very important in a film. A lot of people don't think that, but it is. It's important because everyone's coloring is not the same in all parts of their face. You want to keep it even. Even though it's not a lot of makeup, you don't see a lot of color, they do have makeup on. A lot of makeup isn't necessary for film. You want to keep them looking very natural because you do lose a lot um, in the exposure. I have um, Jim Spruill, who played my boss in the movie Alma Mater. And he was such a good actor, and I felt so, so, like I had so much more to learn when I was around the guy. I, was, I thought of him when I wrote this part. I play the character of the homeless man. I come into the park, 
I seem to be just an ordinary homeless man, and then I start to have weird interactions. Essentially, what I'm doing is pretty much unexplained until the very end. And then it's revealed that I have a, a hidden purpose, a hidden task, a hidden meaning to my behavior. When I told them certain people who were attached, Lonnie Farmer from Cider House Rules, I got him through Kevin Fennessy casting. Kevin's a great guy, he helped us out quite a bit on the project. Here, making a short film, Andrew's uh, film about, I'm not sure what really, uh, reality, unreality, got a bunch of good kids here, good crew. I'm playing coach, uh, playing the coach. I'm also a mysterious figure that is uh, unclear later in the film. Uh, you, you don't know who's who in this film, uh, what's what, uh, who's good, who's bad, who's up, who's down, things of that nature, very ambiguous and interesting. My uh, role is that of a businesswoman. The film is part illusion, part reality. It's a very interesting, interesting concept. It's my first student film, it's my first short. I tend to avoid student films like The Plague. They don't pay um, long hours. Invariably, the students have, have come up with a brand new concept that no one else has ever had before, uh, which generally is not the case. I knew that I wanted to be in this film when I went to the audition, and I had such a great time improvising with Pam. We just, we had so much fun, and I, I thought Andrew was just so creative, the way he had us improvising and the way he talked about the film, and I thought the script was fascinating. And as, actually, as Pam and I were leaving the audition, we both said to each other, we had such a good time with the audition, even if we didn't get in the movie, it was worth the time. So it was just a gift. Uh, the role I play is titled A Businessman, and he is one of the three characters that sort of meets in the park that people dream about. And in the dream sequence, he is a a uh, chef, um, and he has this sequence where he's chopping and he's cooking with his duck, everything else like that. Then it gets uh, kind of bizarre, and we go into a sequence where he runs into this room with screaming children. Fight! 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 He tells him to shut up. Fight! Fight! Shut up! Gets on t up on the table and starts dancing. As an actor, this particular movie um, is very interesting for me because I'm used to very verbal um, roles and in this I have two words and I really appreciate the non nonverbal um, acting that I get to do in the film. We're here on the set of uh, the first day of shooting the film and we're in Salem, Massachusetts in the Salem Common. Oh, okay, it's okay. It was great. It was perfect. Okay. I really liked it. How'd you feel about it? <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, the purpose of checking the gate is when the film runs through the camera, uh, it causes a vacuum, like a suction, and uh, any dusts or particles will come in and uh, get trapped in the gate. And when you project it on the screen, a little piece of dust will be the size of like a giant snake waving around. And so we try to prevent that. So we check the gate after every take. And if it's clean around the edges of the film, uh, then, uh, then we move on to the next shot. Good. Good job. Kate is good. This far, I'd say all in all, the day went really well. It's going well. We're about to wrap. At this point, a group of students from a nearby high school came into the park to have their prom photos taken, and I had to find a way to make the situation work and keep everyone happy. Everyone, can you give me one moment, please? Now you can all watch this, and when we're done, after the shot, I'd like all of you to be in the documentary saying hi, but we need quiet right now for 30 seconds. Where do you guys go to school? From Salem High, say hi to the documentary! Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right, thank you so much. Have a good night. Today oh, great. It's going, it's going well. Ooh, this is an excellent location. You couldn't find a, a better one. It's much more secure. It's great. We have places to put everyone. You know, the little rugrats can't run away from us unless they climb over the, uh, the cage, and then we throw something at them and knock them down. So, you know, it's going much better. It's, um, it's a lot easier, I think, today. It's, it's a little bit more easygoing. We don't have as many shots to pull off. So everybody's at a slower pace and a little bit more relaxed.
Hi. Are you are you the director or what are you the star? Yeah, I am. I am the star. They told, they told me I was the star. I don't know why. I don't know. I think I'm gonna be knocked over by a kid when I have a, when they're playing soccer. <laughs> Well, I fell down earlier. I wanted to get that out of the way. And, then, right, right, right. and now I won't fall down now. I was in charge of getting all of these extras here. I was in charge of getting all the soccer kids, in charge of getting all the dancers that you'll see tomorrow. Um, I'm in charge of making sure that all of them are set up, making sure all of them got here, their directions, that sort of thing. I make sure that Andrew has everything he needs. I'm kind of Andrew's uh, more mathematical side. He gets to be creative. I get to make sure everything that he wants to be creative with happens. Uh, every take, I try to record a, a couple key pieces of information. Number one, how long the take is, how many feet of film, what lens we're using, um, what our T-stop is, which is how open or close our aperture is. Also, you put in additional information, like if we change our shutter degree, if we run at a different uh, film rate from uh, 24 frames per second. There's developing instructions on here. Most things will say, you know, develop normal. This one is prepped for video, which means they're going to transfer our negatives onto video for the, uh, the director to look at. On this shoot, I'm doing G&E, Griffin Electric, but on a day like today where it's a wide open set and we're outside in the sun, there's not much electrics to be done. There's no lights. Uh, so I'm helping out doing whatever I can. It was really fun do big uh, soccer extra, but it was hard work. We came here like six in the morning. We've been here almost seven to eight hours. You gotta sit in the same seat you were sitting. You gotta have everything the same way you had it. You cannot move anything from that position. I didn't think being an extra would be that involved, but we were involved all day, which did surprise me that we were a big part of it. We probably won't be seen that much in the film, but it was an important part for us to play today. Because the director is also the producer, that made it a little difficult. The production manager, who would usually be the one who would run the whole set, like it would be at the location and um, would be talking to the liaisons. She would be making sure that the craft services got here, making sure that everyone was fed, calling for equipment, and she she walked out. I was very uncomfortable when that happened um, and I, I, I literally, it was a communication, you know, like, she's awesome, she was doing such great work. The only thing I could actually think about clouding up was the production manager walking off and that's something between the both of them but to be honest, I could see why. I have never walked off a set in my entire life and this is the very first time for me. Maybe directors shouldn't be producers as well unless they really have a good foundation in, uh, in producing. But you've got these two worlds. You've got the director with the talent and you've got the director producer with you know, the crew. So kind of being able to switch the face off, change the communication in terms of how you speak to your crew. I've seen the way he speaks to other crew members and I know why they're upset if they haven't voiced it already, and I'm not gonna voice for everybody, but I do know that people are upset. When you don't have the patience and when you don't have the understanding and the consideration for everyone involved, it makes it impossible. In terms of what I do with my crew, I'm very demanding. So when something happens or, you know, someone just doesn't respect the chain of command that's on a set, which is you talk to an AD and you step up to the, that, you know, and they get it to the first AD and eventually it gets to the director, I mean, because I'm trying to deal with so many things. Andrew has a way about him where he'll yell a lot. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that as long as you're getting your point across effectively and you're able to sit down comprehensively and talk to people. But I don't think that Andrew has mastered talking to crew quite yet. I totally think I should not walk off. I totally think I should stick it out because that's what you should do to fix these problems but at this point in time I I can't fix them no matter what you don't you don't walk off the set and it doesn't happen often because you just you kind of suck it up and but it was a rare occasion where I felt she was justified in in walking
because of uh, decisions made by Andrew and the way Andrew treated her. Your reputation is the most important thing you have and it's all word of mouth. And I suppose walking off is going to, you know, mar whatever reputation that I do have. But, you know, um, you have to be able to be honest with yourself. No, no matter how you feel about how someone's working as a director, you have a responsibility to the people you are working with who are going and to get through it. And you kind of feel for, for Ian and for Zarina and for the people who are working really hard and working for free. And um, so I had a few more responsibilities because, because of uh, her walking off. I don't know. It's just the way it works, I guess. You have to decide what works for you and what doesn't. And that's the most important thing in this business is to keep yourself happy because you sacrifice everything else. sure stuff gets done and we also have fun while we're doing it you know it's important when you're dealing with young talent that you consider all the different angles that you can entertain them with i want like yells like you're panicking very scared fight 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 can you do that you think you can do that for me fight 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 that's what i want okay today you know you had a huge issue between talent and extras and killed me that there was this kind of unhappiness between the two. I mean, this lady, you know, had a rough time, and I understand it was intense. One of my actresses, Pamela, she's great, and, you know, kids are snickering a little at what she was doing, and she's an incredible actress, and it's a, it's a very uncomfortable scene for everyone. She's getting slapped. I blew up. I indeed, I, indeed, I did blow up. Um, one of the things that I pride myself on is doing my job and doing it well. I don't flub lines if it can be avoided and I try and hit my mark accurately every single time that's my job that's what I do that's the training so that the technical aspects work what we were doing today was a lot of stage combat and my my scene partner Jody um, is not very familiar with stage combat so I, I taught her how to slap me under normal circumstances, I would have had her pull the punch. She didn't know enough about stage combat to pull it. Because you, you, you go and you hit someone on the meat of the jawline, and just when you, you, you swing, you've got to put the power into it, and just as you get here, you, you slap. So you don't do that. And I did not have her do that because she couldn't do it. So I was having her slap me full on the jawline as hard as she could. And we've got a room full of 30 kids down there. And I said to Andrew, I had specifically, I said, let's do an extra rehearsal where Judy, uh, where Jody actually hits me because I don't want these kids to be shocked and react and screw it up because I don't want to get hit more times than necessary. Andrew said, good thinking. That's right. That's a good idea. And we did that. They saw it. Fine. Now let's roll tape. Well, guess what? First take, they laugh. It, and we were fine, but they laughed. Second take, they laugh. <laughs> I had a moment. One note, guys. You have to mouth the fight, fight, fight thing. I'm going to do one more. That was awesome. OK, guys. Really? Honestly, God, yeah, may I, I have a moment? <laughs> if I hear another laugh. At that point, I'd been hit in rehearsal maybe four times. and at least three or four times full in the face for the camera. I'm, I'm excited, I'm, I'm, I'm getting into character. Now my character gets angry. That's another part of it which nobody considers. So, you know, cut, they're giggling. You know what? Shut the <laughs> Which isn't exactly what I said, but it's close enough to quote. Oh, all right, everyone, listen to me now. Okay, now you know, I understand exactly how she feels because I'm trying to make you guys look great here. Work with me here. And whoa, 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 can I, everyone, can you just, can you, no, listen, 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 listen. No, I know, I know. I, hey, hey, whoa, 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 whoa,
so to you know manage her going and getting angry at all the extras 40 extras and then the extras are like saying she needs to apologize to us now i've got to have the energy to to connect with 40 people not just two or three people and you were telling me even between each shots i totally know what you're, what you're talking about um so what we're gonna do we're gonna get let's i'm gonna i'm gonna call you to walk around when we're ready for her why don't we like let jo uh, let pamela just have a moment by herself because okay, she needs some you want Jody. me to stay? I'm fine. All right, Jody and stay. You guys can stay. You got, no, seriously. You guys, I got to talk to the manager. I'm not pressed. Right. I'm not pressed cool. about it. All right. Come on. As long as you're fine. Hey, I'm fine. I guess she just didn't have to swear at a child. You know, that's, oh, all. that's not we'll professional at all. I'm really, really sorry that, that anyone had to hear that. And, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. And if you're willing to work with me, I want to continue. Are you willing to work with me, though? Yeah. 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 If I'm pouring 200% into each and every shot that I do, I expect the people that are also pouring 200% but have less to do to at least show discipline. Not even professionalism. They haven't done this before. Just discipline. Nothing that has happened on this set is, is unusual for making film. I mean, you know, tempers fray, stuff happens, you know. Uh, kids that are working as extra, extras gets, get bored. They, you know, they get amused by something they see and they forget that they're not supposed to be laughing. I mean, this is, this is typical of what filmmaking is. It's now six o'clock. I have been here 11 Me hours. Me too. I mean, and it's like, and we're just getting to the meat of our scene now. 11 hours, and I've got 17-year-olds telling me that I'm unprofessional. Ain't no little kids will laugh at anything. I mean, somebody could just say a stupid word and kids will laugh at it. And she has to then, you know, get all upset and cuss at the children. That's, kids just say it makes sense. She's, that She's very lucky happen. someone's parent is not here because if my mother was here, it would have been a problem, a serious problem. She's the one getting hit. And I'm getting hit, like, every single time because they're messing up. And somebody said they want an apology from me. I said, fine. Let her get a slap and I'll apologize. Seriously. Good, get a slap, I'll apologize. And then you will have deserved it. It's so like, you know, finally, you get to the point where, you know, 20 minutes have gone by and you need to finish shooting the scene. So we finally did bring Pamela back out and thankfully everyone remained professional and we got the shots that we needed. Everyone just did their job and we moved on to the next day. This is a big setup, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, we're basically lighting up a whole, a whole city block here, which is, you know, that's a lot of lights. So my job as a production designer is to create an atmosphere that can mirror reality, but it's not. So we have to find ways to make it look real, but also make people think and also get along across the message that we're trying to, to get across without making it look like it's a theater, or making it look like it's a cartoon or something. It's gonna be a long night, four o'clock in the morning, I think. That's what we're going to. I'm moving dumpsters and picking up trash and moving all over the street Bring with bare here. hands. I'm going to get malaria. Pain is temporary, <laughs> film is forever. Remember that. Action! Why are you in the middle of a physical patrol? Help me, please! Cut. That's a wrap. Congratulations. Thank you. I actually played four characters, no, three characters. It was my first film. <laughs> And I uh, pretty much had fun. What made me fascinated about the script was that he brought some kind of idea about Buddhism, because I'm studying religion. Today was the last night of shooting. Let me see if I could sum up exactly what happened to me on the shoot tonight. Well, I got to deal with locking up the set, which at first seemed like a pretty easy job. Don't let people through. Everything's fine. Till the whores started showing up. See, we're in a bad part of Chinatown. It seems that this is kind of the combat zone. We had one lady walking around, showing herself off. She turns around, all of a sudden, 
the officer that we had, she she doesn't see him, turns around, she sees him, she Damn, takes off. Then a police, a paddy wagon shows up, right? And they start arguing with one another. He turns around, he looks at what's going on, and he's like, what's going on? Do you have your permit? Where are your cops? Where are your officers? But he doesn't give us any time. He drives right down here over the cones, almost running over power cable boxes. And he's yelling at us because the whore said that we were in her territory. Did you see what just happened? No, I haven't. A prostitute came up and complained about us shooting here. This is her area. And oh, so he he came and tried. It definitely has to do with the prostitute. It's like the craziest night ever. But in the end, it's like four in the morning right now. We're packing up. I've never worked at this capacity of being a second AD. This is definitely the most work I've ever done as a second AD, and it was definitely a test for myself. My overall feeling is that. I was really lucky to work with an amazing crew, and many of them I've never worked with before. And I was in a position to be able to take care of them. I'm very happy that, that I worked on this set because I'm learning so, so much. And it's been a, a great experience that way. Bottom line is to be a script supervisor and to know what that experience is like and to be in this angle of, of film production is very important, especially if you want to become a director, because it it will give you so much experience in terms of watching other directors with their actors, what they do wrong, what they do right, and what you might want to pick up when you become a director yourself. We're trying to do something that's extremely professional and um, make it look good. You know, we want to produce a product for people. So all these little things that, that happen, what, how small or no matter how big, um, you know, the show's got to continue on. So. We find a way. As an executive producer, that's what you have to do. You have to find a way to make it happen and uh, keep the show going. Uh, you just, it takes time and it takes a lot of patience and it takes a lot of people getting on your nerves. If, if you go into it thinking that you're going to be Steven Spielberg or George Lucas or, or any director that you find phenomenal, you're, you're in the wrong business. If I were to give anyone any advice who wanted to be an actor or a film student, it would be to make sure that this is what feeds your soul, because chances are it's not going to put food on the table for a long time. And I just thought it was a wonderful uh, journey. I'm young, you know? I'm just learning. I've never directed something like this before, and I think everyone's teaching me something. I think I'll be ready to do a feature film after this thing.